Hey there folks, this is GreenyXI, welcoming you right back to Let's Play Dangamapa V3. This is episode 34. In the last episode, we started off chapter 4, and we had the bit of madness with the main motivation kicking in. Well, it hasn't really kicked in yet. <laughs> Kakichi nicked it, the card key, and said that he didn't know where the card key was meant to be used, so he gave up on it. Can we trust that? I don't know. And Mew seemed to be scared shitless. Speaking of Mew, we've now got some free time for this episode. It won't be the whole episode, I'm sure, knowing this game. But I want to wrap up what we couldn't finish off last time with her. Yep. Leave me alone. I'm trying to find meds to help take the edge off. <laughs> no, we're going to talk to you, Mew. We're going we're gonna to finish you off. I somehow end up growing up a little closer to Mew. Growing up? <laughs> yeah, we'll give her a present. Not gonna mess it up like last time. Right, what have we got here that we can give? Uh, I don't really want to give the last of an item if possible. Uh, yeah, go for the caramels. She loves them. <laughs> I've wanted this for a while. I never expected you to have it, Poichi. Why didn't you give it to me sooner? Jeez, you just wasted my precious time. <laughs> Still thinking about Mew's confession, I couldn't come up with a plan. Hey Shuji, why the sad, miserable face? I guess I was the only one worried about it. Since you look so bummed out, I got you a present. Oh, got us one. What a crazy idea. I almost feel sorry for you. I, Mew Iruma, will show you just how versatile I really am. So here, take this. Is this a pie? Yeah, an apple pie? I baked it from scratch myself. Oh, if we had given her that, that apple bunny thing. <laughs> we had an apple pie back. <laughs> I didn't think she would bring me a pie. And if it looks really professional, Mew must be a pretty good cook. Impressed, I inspected the pie. That's when I found. Uh, Is this a hay? <laughs> Don't worry, I added some hidden ingredients. Wait. Don't worry. I'm going to worry about hay in my food. <laughs> oh. Don't complain about a gift. I just want the person I like to eat me. <laughs> I made more too. Cookies with my fingernails, chocolate with my blood. Well, at the very least, it means that her confession was genuine. And I suppose hair is better than blood. <laughs> But she's uh, coming on a little strong. She's good at that. Uh oh, she's staring at me. She wants me to eat it. Um, I'm really honoured that you made this for me, but I'm concerned about the hygiene. And there are no hospitals around here, so we have to be careful. <gasps> you got a lot of balls to lecture me. But you know, even a genius like me should make more, should be more careful with the stuff I make. If anything happened to you, I might go crazy. If that happened, the world would never recover, right? Isn't that right? Yeah. Oh well, I'll just have to make you something else. Huh? What? The time has finally come to use this. Mew whipped out the ray gun from earlier. Time to go commando. She took aim, and then... Uh, a piece of fabric suddenly materialised in my hand. If I remember correctly, I think I know what this is. What do you think of that, Shuichi? Can you feel my resi residual heat? Yeah, yeah, I can. You get it now? You've earned the right to date me. Huh? I've what? When we get out of here, you're going on a date with me. Got it? It's already decided. It is? <laughs> the doy. <laughs> if you're going to date with me, I'll just explode with excitement. If you turn me down, the world will never recover. Understand? You're the only guy in the world who's ever made me feel this good. So you better take responsibility for what you've done. <laughs> <laughs> okay. This is how Mio expresses her feelings. I see. Okay. All right, I understand. <laughs> it's a date. You promised. Better not forget. Mew smiled, but I returned it with something more akin to a grimace. But at the same time, she is showing me a lot of affection. I'm happy that I was able to make this kind of connection with Mew. I'm a little, uh, no, very nervous about this, but still, I'm sure it'll be okay. We'll get out of here together. Yay, Mew's done. Learn new skill, XXX Ray Goggles. <laughs> okay. We should get knickers as well. I then spent some time listening to Mew's delusional date ideas. Yay, Mew's undergarments! Yeah, <laughs> There we go. Ah, it's night time. Oh, we only got a little bit of free time that time. I'm sure the next day will be the same. Now 10pm, night time. Staying up late's bad for your skin, so maybe your asses should go to bed, okay? The reason I can't sleep is because I'm up all night thinking about you, Monophony. But um. What? You can't just blurt out something like that. It's funny how we're getting a loved one when we just had that with Mew. 
It's kind of crazy, really. I've never thought about you this way before. When did you worm your way into my heart? <gasps> so what are you going to do about this? We can't, we're family, you know? You can't forget that. <laughs> I want you, Manotna. Manotaro. That was a coincidence. What was that? Mm, no point worrying about the mana cubs. Time for training. I feel like I haven't done it in a long time. Alright, to the courtyard. Okay. It'd be good if it just took you there, because you're having the same journey every time anyway. Oh, hello, Gonda. See, everyone can go out at night time again now, because that, that sort of club stopped. Ah, good. You here, bro? Yeah, it's been so long since the three of us have done this. I noticed out the three of them, there's only nine people left. A third of us are in the same sort of little click. That's true. It's because Kate was scared of ghosts. I wasn't scared. Like, don't make me think about them. When I first met Maki and Kaito, I never could have imagined hanging out like this. Right. Anyway, let's get started. First off, 100 sit-ups. You guys better get pumped up. The three of us lined up on the grass and started our routine. One. Two. Three. Twenty-five. Twenty-six. Twenty-seven. Twenty-eight. Maki, you're way too fast. When you really think about it, universe is impossibly vast. Hey, less talking, more working. What about your sit-ups? Kaito? <laughs> he doesn't care. Kaito stood up slowly, his body, body hesitant. Sorry, go use the bathroom. Oh, okay. Kaito slowly began walking away toward the school building. I wonder what's wrong. He's not in much of a hurry for needing to go to the bathroom. That's true. Do you want me to go check on him? I just finished doing my 100 sit-ups. Huh? Already? But... Uh, maybe you shouldn't go, because it's the boys' bathroom. Hmm. Did that not occur to you? Yeah. Do you want me to die? Sorry. <laughs> oh, sorry. Sure, well, that's fine. By the, way, By the way, this seems like a good time to ask, but... Well... Did you like huh? Weird. I assumed you didn't, because that wouldn't be... That would be weird. Uh, what do you mean weird? I don't understand. Liking someone you just met, especially in a situation like this. Well, yeah, yeah. Then and tell me, under what circumstances is liking someone not weird? Huh? Hmm? I don't know. I don't really understand what that is. Nope. Never mind. Just forget I asked. No. Forget you asked? What did you bring up? Why did you bring this up, Mackie? Like no reason. I was only curious. Huh? No reason? Um, Mackie, you're being cruel. You ask me a personal question, then act like you don't care. Got it. Hey, you guys making up while I was gone? Perfect timing as always, Kaido. Uh, um, anyway, what's wrong, Kaido? Why did you leave all of a sudden? Uh, I drank too much water before training, but I emptied myself out, so I'm good now. Let's go. So let's continue where we left off. Let's get pumped up for sure this time. Well, continue? I don't recall you doing even one yet, Kaido. Right. So from the beginning, of course, you guys are going to restart with me. I already finished doing my hundred. Huh. Don't be so cold. No road is long with good company, right? <laughs> I don't think that phrase applies to us. <laughs> it could if you agreed. Shuichi. Let your sweat wash away all your sadness, fear, worry, and hardships. Just start moving your body and your pain will become memories before you know it. Then you should train too. Well, I don't have anything to worry about. Cause, I mean, I'm Kaito Mamota, luminary of the stars. Hey, no fair, Kaito. <laughs> He's just sitting back doing nothing again, is he? In the end, Kaito convinced us to do all of our sit-ups up, sit over, but Kaito and I had to give up, and only Maki was able to finish. Considering it's his training idea, he's not very... fit. <laughs> Probably a reason for that, as we saw at the end of Chapter 3, I suppose. I'm so tired. A lot's happened today, but there's still something bothering me. Hmm. That flashback light this afternoon. All those meteorites. The Gopher Project. The mysterious cult organisation. Are they connected to the ultimate hunt, or the funeral, or the killing game? Those answers might save us. But no matter how hard I tried to solve it, it's all a mystery. Thinking about everything I saw, I'd fallen asleep before I knew it. Oop, theater. Have you ever wondered why soccer players have numbers on their jerseys? It's how many mochi each player gets in the red bean soup they eat after the game. Oh. It's too much work for the guy who's making the soup to check each player after the game. It's much easier to check during the game when the number is on their uniforms. That way, they can just prepare the red bean soup during the game. 
and then the red bean soup will be ready to eat as soon as the game is over. And if players want a different number of mochi, they can just trade jerseys with each other. You know how after the game, players will sometimes trade jerseys? That's how they exchange the number of mochi they have to eat after the game. Oh, but for baseball jerseys, the number is how many pieces of meat they get in their curry. And for volleyball, it's how many pieces of sliced pork they get in their ramen. As you can see, jersey numbers vary greatly depending on the sport. This has been the Random Trivia Corner, brought to you by Monokuma. Oh, he gives us so many truthful facts. <laughs> Morning. <laughs> oh, he's been a she's been abused now. How long are you going to keep crying, you annoying bitch? <laughs> you know how busy I am with band practice, arcade games, pachinko. Now give me some money. Hurry up. Please don't keep me in the tummy. You can hit my face all you want, though. Just leave the money on the chest and get out here. You went like this before. It used to be so nice. I've forgotten all about the past. Did you forget that I'm forgetful? Come on, hurry. Not the tummy. Oh, God. That escalated quickly. <laughs> what happened to them overnight? Well. suppose it doesn't really matter. I should head to the dining hall. Okay, let's get going. See if there's any... Any update on what's going on. I'm not going to talk to anyone on the way. I don't... I don't like filler in anime, in anything. So just getting to the plot is, is better for me. Here we go. How is everyone? As soon as I entered the dining hall, I heard a loud voice echo through it. But we gotta do it. If not now, then when? Like I said before, it's reckless. There's still two exercises, right? But Got to know that, but... Watching friends disappear, seeing everyone get weaker. Got to know can take this anymore. That's why Got to go fight Monokuma. Huh? Fight Monokuma? Shuji, good timing. Talk some sense into him. Got to saying a bunch of reckless stuff and he won't listen to us. Got to know it's reckless, but only wait to save everyone. Waiting around, doing nothing, just make more victims. That way Gonta gotta risk his life. Real gentlemen would risk life. Gonta gladly give up life to save everyone. Gonta, I get how you feel, but don't you think you're getting ahead of yourself? Wait. It's reckless to fight against them barehanded. More like meaningless. You shouldn't do that. And even if you did do it, it wouldn't stop the killing game. Hmm? Why not? Actually, why would you even want to stop the killing game? It's just starting to get fun. It'd be a waste to stop it now. You guys are all whack jobs. Is something wrong with your heads? Something's wrong with your head. Oh, don't tell me. You guys aren't confident enough to win the game. Jeez, if you're really that much for a weenie, then you might actually lose, you know? But in my case, I'm full of confidence. I'll win the game no matter what. Win the game? You plan on becoming the next blackened then? Me? The next blackened? Yeah, sure. If that would help me win, then I'd do it. Are you serious? Of course, I am. Games are only fun when you play them seriously, right? So come on guys, let's enjoy this more. It's not often you get to play a killing game, you know? So, who's going to be the next victim? The game can't continue until there's another victim, so someone, start killing already. If you don't, then I'll kill someone instead, just like I promised, got it? That's enough! Kaido shot a Kikichi like a bullet, and... Kikichi? What the hell's gotten into you? You were messed up to begin with, but this is a whole nother level of weird- If you keep acting like this, I'm gonna knock your senses back into you! Um, you already hit him. Kaito, please stop. There is never a good reason to commit violence. Even minor aggressions can lead to atrocities such as murder. Kibo got through to him. Kaito dropped his clenched fist. <laughs> Fine, I'll stop for now. But Kikichi, I hope that whole stupid speech of yours was a lie. Maybe, Maybe you got to have to do it. If friends are going to fight like this, then got to go fight Monokuma. You can't! Like I said, you can't. Please don't do anything reckless. Ah. Yeah, that's right. There's no need to be so reckless. Huh? Mew? The only thing you should do, you should be reckless with is that tree trunk dick of yours. Hmm. Is that what, is what you, you... Oh my god. Is what you would usually say. What's with the uncharacteristic concern? You know. I'm serious. There's no reason for Gonta to do something so reckless. Because I, Mew Ruma, the gorgeous girl genius, will save you all. What's wrong? Save us? Sure. Got it? Just wait a little longer. I'll bring you to a world where the killing game doesn't exist. Huh? A world where the killing game doesn't exist? <laughs> you just have to wait and see. I'll keep my plan a secret. I love being a tease. <laughs> I've got a bad feeling about this. Uh, Me too. Okay. No, it'll, it'll all be fine. 
don't worry about it. <laughs> After eating breakfast in that awkward atmosphere, we went back to our rooms. Bit more free time? I'm hoping for a bit more free time. The reason Gonta said he wanted to fight Monokuma was to save his friends. I think Mew's the same. What about me? My friends die and all I can do is solve their murder after it's over. No. There has to be something more I can do. Like, have some free time and do nothing. <laughs> Anyways. Oh wait. Oh, is it? <laughs> it's from Mew, isn't it? <laughs> Busty, brainy, beautiful goddess Beauty. Yeah, okay. Uh, <laughs> right, next up I think we'll go for... Ooh. It might be interesting to go for Kogichi. What do you think? Yeah, I think we will. I'd love to try and find out a bit more about him. Where was it? We saw him somewhere. I shouldn't have pressed that one. In the dorms. He's in the dorms. I was actually going to go for Kaito. But I think Kikichi would be a bit more interesting, to be honest. We see a lot of Kaito anyway. Oh. Hello. <laughs> Might as well get him. Okay, this is room two. There it is. Kaito almost pummeled me to death. Should I hang out with Kikichi? Yes. It's a lot. Although I don't plan on dying so soon, you know. When I become the victim or the culprit, I'll set up lots of tricks. So everyone can have loads of fun. Yeah. Hopefully. I'm trying to find my notes for Kikichi, because I made notes for each of them, not knowing who I would really go for at the time. Um Can't find him. Ah, there he is. Yeah, spend some time with him. Kikichi and I grew a little closer. Definitely. Okay, what should we give him? He likes a good a good boba tea. I don't actually know what it is. Even reading the description, I don't really know. And we got loads of them, so let's give him one. Oh, this is nice. I've always wanted something like this. It's true. Well, that's not like, eh? Don't worry, I'm actually happy. Do we... you want to talk to me, eh? You must be pretty reckless, Shuichi. I'm the ultimate supreme leader, you know? Because... Sorry, you say. But does that really mean anything? What's this organization you run? Oh. Hmm? Didn't I tell you? I'm the supreme leader of a secret, evil organization. Hmm. Yeah, you said that, but... Yeah. It's pretty impressive, too. It has over 10,000 members. But... You said that as well, but I can't think of any organization that fits that description. <laughs> hmm? Didn't I tell you? I'm also a liar, too, you know? Okay. Yeah, you've mentioned it. It's true. I'm telling the truth when I say I'm the supreme leader of a secret, evil organization. <laughs> We're not getting any sense. I get dizzy talking to Kikichi. I feel like I forget how words work. My organization controls the entire world, but of course, it's behind the scenes. All the world's mafia syndicates are under my command. Oh, They'll get into turf wars if I don't control them. That's just trouble for everyone. It's a pain, especially since peace is the best thing for the world. I don't think I can believe the words of the leader of an evil organization. No, yeah. Which is why I do the same thing with the government, too. I control politicians with blackmail and manipulate the stock market on a whim. I have subordinates all over the world. The White House, Kremlin, Beijing, Wall Street, London, and even the Tokyo Stock Exchange. You know? I make one phone call and the world changes. Let me know if I get bored with the world. Uh, how do you rise to the top? Um. <laughs> well, I killed my parents and inherited the organization. Huh? You killed? It's a lie. Don't worry, I'm lying. You see, okay, I only killed my older brother. Huh? Huh? I'm lying about that too. How I rose in power is top secret. I'd have competition if you copied me. Shuichi. So now that you know about us, Shuichi, you must die. Wait. You told me. I didn't even ask. Oh yeah, me. oopsie poopsie. Such a ditz. <laughs> then let you live for now, since I messed up. But I'll kill you eventually. Uh, Serious? Yeah. yeah, for realsies. I hate lies and jokes. Just kidding. I lied again. <laughs> He's such a troll. I love him. <laughs> And it begins with Kikichi. Turned to my room, mind and body exhausted. Why am I so tired just from talking? He said he would kill me. It's just lying, right? Well... Yeah. <laughs> they did say earlier on, you know, they, they might aim for Shuichi because he's a detective and all that. Okay, still got some time left, so... Where's he to now? Do you reckon he's still in his room? Nope, wrong button. There we go. Ah, okay, he's out just outside by the seams of it, so we might as well just walk it. 
thing is, when they show us outside, it's hard to know exactly where. Okay. Um, there's someone down by here. Who is it? Ah, it's him. Good. World without killing game. Who asked for that? We're having so much fun with this interesting game. Yeah, we'll we'll talk to him. What's that pea brain bitch that planning? She's gonna do something unnecessary, isn't she? You never know. Never know with any of the characters. I spent some time with Kakichi. Kakichi and I grew a little closer. Of course. Okay, this time. Yeah, let's have a look. Fifteen. Oh, we got tons of these, these face masks. Oh no, dumplings modelled after shape masks. Oh, that's weird. You'd love it. <laughs> I guess this isn't that boring. You're pretty good taste, Shuichi. Not as good as mine. I surprise you with a gift one of these days, Shuichi. So, what are you here for today? Did you come to beg for your life? Um, are you serious about killing me? Yeah. Of course. Since I'm the ultimate supreme leader, duh. I swore my own title that I would protect my organization. That's why you must die. I can't tell if you see this. No, I'll do it already. Get on the ground and beg like a dog. No, I want to see you slit your stomach too. Come on, do it pretty please. Wait. If I did that, I would die. Psh, guess I couldn't trick you. Boring. Okay, how about this? If you want to live, you got to beat me in a game. A game? Yeah. I didn't give you much of a choice, but listen, this is your chance to survive. Ah, uh, okay, what kind of game? That's... Russian roulette, but with a bullet in every chamber. You go first. Wait. <laughs> I'll die for sure. You never know, the bullet could get jammed. No. Revolvers don't jam. You got oh, I guess you knew that already. I'm not playing Russian roulette. No. Fine, fine. Jeez, you're being pretty picky for someone who's about to be killed here. Oh, then you got to play a shadow game. It's time to duel. Oh my god, a Yu-Gi-Oh reference. Huh? <laughs> a duel? Shadow game? Yeah. Mm-hmm. You're going to lose a soul will get sent to the shadow realm. Right. We each pull one card from this deck, and whoever has the largest number wins. Well, that's a little bit different, but it works. Where do you get the cards from? Get it's my it? turn. I draw a card. The power of the heart of the cards is strong within me. Oh my god. I don't think I ever talked to Kikichi in uh, in my first playthrough. I drew number seven. It's neither high nor low. Possibility of you winning drops to 50%. Kikichi's in an odd mood. Wonder what's going on. You get it? I end my turn. Now it's your turn. It's just having fun. Draw a card. Unleash your attack. Then... Okay. Ah, seven. Huh? What? How can this be? You drew the Monster Reborn card? Oh my god. <laughs> <laughs> you truly are an amazing duelist, Shuichi. You aim for a tie instead. You intrigue me. I wouldn't say I did that intentionally. But it's the end for you. I'd let you live only if you had beaten me. You only have three events left in your life, so you better entertain me until then. <laughs> three events? What three events? What does he mean by that? <laughs> huh, that was a good one. I'm enjoying this. Free time is normally something that I feel a bit... is a bit of a waste, but I do. I am enjoying it with Kikichi. I think he is just playing with Shuichi. Oh, night time. Oh, she's gone. This is an announcement. What's this place called again? Hmm? What time is it right now? I forgot. Hey. Actually, have I always been alone? I forgot that too. Ooh. Can't remember. I feel like I used to have someone very important to me. Yeah. I can't remember. Monotaro. I knew it. He's helpless without me. <laughs> poor Monotaro. You can't say poor Monotaro when he's beaten you. Alright, time to go training. Kaito and Maki should be in the courtyard. Yeah. Oh, I hope we can't use the vacuum cleaner. We'll do this training and then hopefully that'll be done in time for... <laughs> for... For that. <laughs> hmm. Kaido, what's wrong? Do you have to go to the bathroom again? No. Nope. He's been like this because of what happened. What happened? What's wrong? You're not feeling well? Nah. I'm fine, my stomach just hurts as all. For today's training, instead of exercise, how about the three of us just talk? Huh? Talk about what? Idiot. Stupid. Nobody decides what they talk about before they start. Let's go find somewhere to sit. Kato picked a random spot in the courtyard. We all sat down. So what are we going to talk about? Didn't you just say we didn't have to decide that? Come on, man. That was just a joke. Uh, uh right. Then let's talk about my... Me? What about me? You know, like general stuff about you. A lot of stuff we don't know. For example, what blood type do you like? What blood type do I like? 
Don't you mean, what's my blood type? Hmm? Did I say something weird? Well, whatever. <laughs> Kaito, you're kind of bad at this. Then you ask something. What's your question for her, huh? Am I like a guinea pig to you guys? You know, I have been meaning to ask. When we first met, you said you were the ultimate child caregiver. Why was that? Shuichi, that's way too direct. You can't just cut to the chase like that. Oh, uh, really? Sorry. All right, then. Let's play it safe and ask her about her favorite spaceship. I grew up in an orphanage. Hmm? I don't know anything about my parents. They were gone before I can remember. Maggie slowly began to tell us her story. At the orphanage where I lived, the older kids had to take care of the younger ones. Because of that, I started looking after the younger ones. I see. So that wasn't a lie, then. For some reason, kids like me. But I'm not particularly fond of taking care of them. Maybe that suits you better than being an assassin. Nope. It's not a matter of whether it suits me or not. I never had the right to choose from the start. Huh? The right to choose? <sighs> when I was around 10 years old, these strangers started visiting the orphanage. At first they seemed like normal kind men. With smiles on their faces, they watched the kids play. But the men never approached them. Thinking back on it, I'm sure they were scoping out our talents. Huh? They were scouting for assassins, and that's why you were picked? Okay. I didn't want to go, but I heard they would donate a huge sum of money if I did. I remember thinking that I had to go, but that was the beginning of hell. Ever since that day, I trained to become an assassin. I think I had some natural talent to begin with, but I worked incredibly hard as well. If I couldn't keep up as an assassin, the orphanage would no longer receive funding. And then, I wouldn't have a purpose in life anymore. Training was difficult. I vomited every day, and cried every night. But after vomiting and crying over and over again, my heart gradually became empty. Eventually, I got used to it. It was the same after my first job. For a while, I couldn't eat or sleep. But after doing this for such a long time, I felt numb. There were times I wondered why I had to kill these strangers, but I eventually stopped thinking about that. I adapted to the lifestyle of killing people, of stealing their lives, and of being a horrible person. Even to this day, I think the same thing after I finish a mission. What is it? What would I have been like if I stayed at the orphanage? I still think about that all the time. Maki sighed deeply after burying her soul. <sighs> That's all. It wasn't an interesting story to listen to, was it? Uh, interesting? Okay. No, Maki, that was. The burden you've been carrying all this. Ah. Jeez, you're carrying too many burdens for someone so small. You know, well, I could say the same to Shuichi. Uh, um, Don't try to shoulder everything on your own. you got to trust other people. Once you're able to share your burdens with other friends, then you'll be stronger. You know, if Maki was able to talk this much, it means she's gotten a bit stronger already. That's true. It might be thanks to the training. Got it. Well, obviously. My training is based on a systematic method. Uh, it's kind of vague. We spent a long while talking about whatever came to our minds. Most of it was meaningless conversation, but it might have been the first time I was able to actually have fun and forget this place. To protect my friends, I need to reveal the truth of this academy. I need to face the truth and reveal it to the world. I have to keep my friends alive. Hmm. Fingers crossed. Hi, hello. Okay, I'm gonna have to save it there because I, I, I have to go. I think. Uh, yeah, I'm gonna have to go. <laughs> this has been Greeny XI. Hope you've enjoyed. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you again in a bit when we see what Kakichi and Monokuma are doing in the same room. I'm gonna get chinwag by the seams of it. Thanks for your fortune, folks. See you again in a bit. Because of that, I started looking after the younger ones.